Hey, I'm Stefan Papadakis. We're here in downtown Los Angeles where we're going to drift our GR Supra and I want to show you guys all the behind the scenes stuff and even a hundred foot jump that they did earlier in the city of San Pedro. Let's get started. This production was a multi-day shoot. The first day was shot in San Pedro which is basically right at the Long Beach and Los Angeles Harbor area. Huge amounts of ship traffic and also a lot of man-made features on the coast. The one that the jump was on was this long peninsula that came off from the coast and they were able to shut it down for this jump. The car they're gonna jump is a 2021 GR Supra. They've got this ramp. They put this powder on it in order to make a more of an effect when the car would take off. And they calculated the right speed and everything, obviously. But the landing is what's so crazy is there's no landing ramp or anything like that. They're just straight up landing the car into cardboard boxes. And the whole landing is only three boxes high. But this is something that they've done in stunts for years. It typically works out pretty well. Andy drove several times by the ramp to make sure that he can get up enough speed and he was confident enough with hitting the ramp at the right place. Because imagine if he's off to the left a little bit or off to the right a little bit, then it could be catastrophe. Fortunately, everything worked out great. I think he wanted to go a little bit faster and probably end up in the top of the boxes. But the way the car landed is he kind of darted into the top set of boxes and then went quite far. And I think he said that it landed pretty hard and he definitely felt it in his back. But the car was only really meant to do just this jump and they really did get the piece of footage that they wanted for the full Toyota piece. I'll link to those videos in the description down below. A little bit later on the video, I'm going to actually profile that whole SUV and all the rig that's inside of it. It's really, really interesting. And also I'll show you guys the drone that they were shooting with as well later on in the video. So after the landing, Andy was able to get out of the car by himself and everybody started digging out the boxes and everything. I know they had radios, so they knew everybody was okay. It seems to have broken maybe the rear suspension on it. It had a couple of flat tires, but you know, they were only using it for the one jump. So I don't think they cared too much as long as the, the driver was safe. Inside the car though, there's a lot of cool upgrades that they did just for the jump. They added a bunch of weight to the back of the car. The concern was that the car would want to go nose down and with the weight in the back, it was able to stay relatively level. The roll cage has tons of bars in it, more than a motorsports cage would have. And this is something that the stunt guys normally build for big jump cars like this. And you can see there's also roll bar padding. They put a custom seat in it and a five or six point harness for the driver. But other than that, the car was pretty stock and they just pulled out some interior and added the safety stuff in order for him to be able to jump. The second day of filming took place in downtown Los Angeles, and that's when they brought out the competition cars. So once we had the car all set up from our shop, we loaded in our trailer and brought that up to downtown. And a neat thing about the night was with the police escort and them shutting different streets down, we were able to drive our competition car on the streets from the base camp to the areas that we were doing the filming. During the underground filming section, there was a three car shoot. The three cars that were used were our competition car, the Ken Gushi GR Supra, and then a couple of factory GR Supras. And they had some cool upgrades on the stock car to enable it to drift along with our competition cars. One was the handbrake. So with the stock cars, how do you make them drift if they don't have a clutch? Like how do you get them initiated? You just throttle into it, so you got to turn traction control off, obviously. Um, and these cars then added uh, hydraulic cam brakes, so plumbed into the you know the ABS system. And then so, will he initiate like in the stock cars? Will he initiate it by just pulling the handbrake and getting back on the throttle and yep. hope it comes back around? Or did you guys already try that? We, we have not tried here. We've tried with you know similar cars in the past, and it should work. But yeah, that's what you do. You do you know you just initiate on the e brake or you start with a rolling burnout. One thing that I thought was super cool on the shoot was the camera car. And this SUV is set up with a full on feature film movie camera and this giant arm that they can control from inside the SUV. It actually takes five people to make the camera car work. You've got a driver, the director that sits in the passenger seat, the director of photography or the camera operator that's in the back left, the arm operator that moves the arm around in the back right, and then the focus puller, the person that adjusts the focus in the camera that's in the trunk. The arm can actually spin 360 degrees in only three and a half seconds. And there's a total of seven monitors or like TV screens inside the SUV. Nick, one of the cameramen, was nice enough to give us a tour. Yeah, tell you where I would find you. Oh yeah, uh, you can find me on Instagram, at Meddlesome Films, M-E-D-D-L-E-S-O-M-E, -E -E, like uh, you meddling kids.
Another really interesting technology piece that they had on this shoot was this totally custom drone. It actually has eight propellers with eight motors, a special mini cinema camera, two giant lithium ion battery packs, and a whole crew that goes with it. This drone was so cool because not only could the pilot fly this thing with his VR goggles on and the controller, but it was actually sending live camera signals back to like the home base here and they could see all of the footage right away of what he was filming and they knew whether they needed to do the shot again or if they had what they needed. Drones are obviously super maneuverable and they can actually get shots better than the helicopters from back in the days because they can fit in places that helicopters can't. So they're able to get these sequences of shots nowadays of cars or whatever that you just couldn't get in the past but the drone makes it possible. All right. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button. If you want to see more of this stuff, please subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.